Good morning, Greater Valley Assembly of God. How many are glad to be in the house of God today? Hallelujah. So glad to have you here. Would you join us by standing this morning and allow God's presence to minister your soul? If you're watching online today, so glad to have you in the house and so glad to have you watching online. We welcome you here. Today is a special day. Evangelist Richard Rockine is going to be sharing here in a little while. <clears throat> but until he does, we're going to be lifting our voice, singing and praising God. Would you join with me as we pray? Father, today, through the name of Jesus Christ, we come. Lord, we appreciate you. We appreciate your presence. And Lord, I ask that you would cause your presence to change us from the inside out. Lord, let us be quick to worship you, quick to honor you. And Lord, let your Holy Spirit minister to us. We bless you today. We love you. Let everything that is done be for your honor and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, can somebody shout, amen. Amen. Would you take a few moments, turn around, greet some people around you. Let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord today. Let's lift our voice. Honor him today.
I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Cause your name is power. Your name is healing. Your shadows burn like a fire and I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by Jesus for 
As I was as I was preparing this morning for this for this worship set, I feel like God was was telling me to read Philippians 4 and it says, "Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand." His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then, the God of peace will be with you. I have struggled with anxiety my whole life and people have struggled with disease, depression, but there is only one person, one thing that can truly break that and that is the name of Jesus, the Son of Man who came and humbled himself before us. He served us. So I think as we sing this bridge, as we sing Shout Jesus, that we should just give it all to him. Don't allow the devil to rob you of the joy that God has put over you, that is put in your life. It's been far too long, and I'm ready to say goodbye to all of my fear, all of my anxiety, and give it over to Jesus. So let's shout Jesus from the mountains. Shout Jesus from the streets. Jesus is the only way we can overcome anything. So let's do Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Sing it again, shout Jesus, shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Lay it down. Jesus in the streets. Surrender your Jesus heart, Jesus. in the dark. Choose peace. Choose life. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus for my healing. Shout Jesus for my healing. And Jesus for my life. And Jesus for my victory. And my peace of mind.
lost or saved find their way at the sound of your great name all condemned feel no shame at the sound of your
the mountains shake before you, the demons run and flee. At the mention of your name, King of Majesty, there is no power in hell for any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am, the great I am, the great I am. Besides you know, but if you don't mind, would you take that person's hand beside you today just as a sign of agreement in the spiritual realm? Father, today, through the name of Jesus Christ, we are coming to you not just as a band of individuals, but Lord, as part of the body of Christ as a whole. Father, each one of us in this room is facing separate issues, separate battles, but Lord, still we are part of one body. And Lord, if one person is going through something, then Lord, we're all going through those things. So Father, I pray that there will be a faith level that will rise in this room, that we may let the devil know he is a liar and you are a victor. And Lord, we can overcome trusting in your name. Father, I pray that we will just depend upon the great I am for everything that we need, everything that we need to be. Lord, for every spiritual victory, for every financial breakthrough. Lord, for every physical touch that we need. Lord, we look towards you. Lord, you are the great I am. There is no one else besides you. You are the almighty, almighty God. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, can somebody shout amen? Would you give the Lord one more praise offering today in this place? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe God is good, and even if you don't, can you just turn and tell somebody God is good? Hallelujah. Continue to play softly, if you will, Rachel. You may be seated today. God bless you in this place. Hallelujah. Like most of you, I believe that we can leave here now and say it has been good to be in the presence of the Lord. Now, we're not going to leave just yet. Uh, however, we are going to uh, just say thank you, God, for what he's done already. Let me grab one of those bulletins off you. Just uh, want to ask you just to, incur, uh, to keep in mind the bulletin this week. A number of things are happening at Greater Valley Assembly of God. <laughs> this coming Wednesday, we're continuing in our series, Who is This Man? The Iconic, Ironic Jesus. <laughs> this coming Saturday, uh, how, how many ladies are in the house? <laughs> that, that sounded about like 10. Let's try that one more time. How many ladies are in the house? <laughs> Next Saturday morning, right here at Greater Valley Assembly of God, there is going to be a breakfast. There is a sign-up sheet out in the hallway. We'd encourage you, come on out to that. Ladies' breakfast, 9 o'clock. I also want to encourage you, at the end of this month, there is going to be a movie night. Uh, we're going to be looking at the movie Overcomer, but also before that is going to be a spaghetti fundraiser for the youth. We encourage you, come on out for that. Delicious spaghetti dinner, 7 bucks includes the movie. Uh, where else would you rather be on a Saturday night? Uh, also, keep in mind the free basketball clinic that's going to be taking place March 26th. Looking forward to that as well. Well, praise the Lord. We want to receive our morning tithes and offering. Then we're going to uh, uh, invite our evangelists to come bless us today. So how, how many are glad to be in the house of the Lord? <laughs> so glad to have you here. So Ken Robinson, nice, loud preacher voice. Get your preacher voice out. Would you ask the Lord's blessing as we get ready to give today? Amen. God bless you. Children, head on out to Children's Church. There are offering baskets provided there. Feel free to give them those offering baskets this morning with your tithes and offering. Just one more announcement uh, as we get ready to invite our evangelists. Ladies, Tuesday night, someone say Tuesday night. Tuesday night, there will not be a ladies Bible study Tuesday night. Many of you are aware that Kathy Gleckner, the one who's been teaching on Esther, keep her in prayer. She's watching online this morning. But uh, last Sunday afternoon, going to go minister to someone, she slipped on the ice, broke her left shoulder. So continue to be praying for her that God will, will minister to her. I spoke with her earlier today, and she said she is feeling better. But uh, she said just something simple as taking a bagel, putting it in the toaster, getting it out, and trying to spread it is very, very difficult. So keep her in prayer that God would just bless her in so many ways. In just a few moments, well, I said in a few moments, in a little bit, we're going to be receiving another offering for our evangelists. But without further ado, I want to welcome a gentleman to the platform who is no stranger to Greater Valley Assembly of God. He's been coming our way for over 20 years now, off and on. And it's so glad to have you in from the Pittsburgh area. Evangelist, our brother and my friend, Richard Rockon. Would you give him a Greater Valley Assembly of God? Welcome. Wow, what a service. The Lord is in our midst. Come on. Help me out. We're two or more gathered together, not in Pastor Chris's name, not in your name, not in my name. But have me know we're two or more gathered. Watch this. In his name, he shows up. And so aren't you thankful the Lord is here? He's already challenged us. He's already encouraged us. He's already loved on us and blessed us and The Lord's here. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Hallelujah! We had a wonderful last. We we had a wonderful service last night for the men's one day conference. Prove yourself to be a man. There were many that were here. Some of you men that were not able to make it. I get that, but I want you to catch this. Our world is in trouble. There are things that are going on, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that men are not being men of God, men of integrity. They're not stepping up. They're not being the leader that we need to be. 
And I want to encourage you. The Lord loves you. He's with you. He's going to help you, equip you, and guide you. But you got to be willing to say, yes, God, count me in. I want to sign up for the job. It's not easy. It's got its challenges. But last night we talked about proving ourselves to be a man. And I made the statement that really we don't have to prove anything. What we have to do is humble ourselves in the sight of God and he will lift you up. So men, God is looking for you and me and the pastor to humble ourselves. To say, God, I need you to be the husband and the father to be all that you want me to be, to lead my family, to lead my crew in the things of God. I remember a while ago I was at a church in Ohio and a a mother came to the altar with her two daughters and they were all crying. I said, what's going on? The mother looked at me, she said, my kids, my daughters don't want to come to church anymore because they say dad doesn't come. Why do we have to go? That's where we're at today. Men, would you stand? I want all the men to stand right now. All the men in this place. Let's look around for a moment. Ladies and children and teenagers, would you extend your hand to some of these men right now? I want to pray for them. Father, thank you for every man that's standing. I pray that you would strengthen them. I pray you would bless them. I pray you would anoint them, you would equip them and give them all that they need, that they would know that you love them, that they would know that you care about them. You have a mission and a plan and a purpose for their lives. Help them to be in the word, to be in prayer, to put on the armor, to confess their sins, to rely on you. May they pray as a family, pray as a married couple, pray in the midst of trials and battles. May they not give up. May they not give in. But may they know that you are with them. You will never leave them nor forsake them. Bless these men. Use them for your glory. I thank you for them. I pray blessings over them that you'll strengthen them, provide for them, give them all that they need. Because your word says you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. So God, bless these men. Thank you for those that were with us last night. Bless those who could not make it that are here now. And we also pray for the men that could not be here today that call Greater Valley AG home. Touch them as well. Thank you for the family of God. Come on, say amen with me in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Well, what a joy to be back. Pastor Chris Gray is in the house. Come on, give him a hand. And his lovely wife, Cindy, who did a great job teaching Sunday school. Where's Cindy? She's left the building. There she is. And you've got a whole crew of people back there running the sound and doing the tech. Look at me. I originally started coming back in 98 when you were in the storefront and kept knocking out the walls. Then you you went to the Methodist church. And so here we are now. But look around. What a great setup. I've been doing this traveling stuff a lot of years. And this is by far the best. I mean, you can't get any more a static and a track. I mean, you've got a couch on the platform. Look at this. You guys set the bar high. Can I stay over here and speak? Your pastor is a pastor of excellence. The leadership, the team you've got, they're, they're all about excellence. And heaven, oh, God is looking for us to do the very best with what we have to the degree that we can do stuff. I mean, come on. So, yeah, it's his spirit. It's his power, his presence, his word, his anointing. I get it. But I'd be proud to have people come to a church like this. This is awesome. So thank you for your leadership. Thank you for the team. Thank you for the board. Thank you for the staff. Way to go, Greater Valley. Come on! Yeah! 
I mean, this is incredible. Now, if my wife was here, she would say, Richard, okay, let's move on. But not here, is she? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. That was always a great song in the 80s. My church in Baltimore, where, where I was at, you know, in the youth group, and whenever there was a power outage, okay, hallelujah, just, just start singing that song till you get things fixed. But what a joy. I've appreciated Pastor Chris and Cindy and his family. What a great, uh, what a great family. And I've appreciated all of you over the many years. In fact, one of my friends that I love when I come, and I can't remember her name, but she came up to me. She said, oh, man, I was asking Pastor Chris when you were going to come back. And Pastor Chris said, he's on the calendar. And so when I saw her this morning, she said, man, I love it when you come. You're crazy. And she, I got the ADHD stuff. But what a joy. Come on, how many love Jesus? Father, thank you for this service. Thank you for the awesome young lady who led the worship. Thank you for the awesome worship team. Thank you for the young people that are willing to step up. I thank you for this church. I thank you for the kids' ministry going on now, for the men's one-day conference last night. Thank you for Sunday school. Thank you for your grace, your love, your blood that was shed. And God, I pray today you would minister to us Reveal yourself to us. Help us to leave not just stirred but changed, knowing you better, going deeper, going higher, saying, Lord, I'm hungry. I'm going to put my plate out for whatever you have for me today. We give you thanks. And everybody said amen. Now we're going to Grace today, right? Nothing like the Grace. How many go to the Grace Buffet? Anybody? That's always a go-to when we come together. But before we get into the Word, I want to sing a song that uh, I don't really sing much anymore because I don't have a voice. I've never had a voice, but really I don't at all anymore. But I do some songs that are kind of crazy, off the cuff, that are acapulco, which is great because I don't need anybody. And so I'm going to go ahead and sing a song, and I want you to sing it with me. And if you have your Bibles, Galatians 5 and verse 1. We're going to look at the Word in just a moment. Galatians 5, 1. Some of you have your mouth open. You're like, who is this dude? <laughs> He's just like walking off the street or what is up? But Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1 in just a moment. But, you know, we talked about some things in Sunday school. Cindy did a great job talking about the sovereignty of God and what that means and what that looks like. And can we explain it? And what are some of the controversies involved? How many understand that? And we talked about just, hey, it's, 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 we have to have faith. I don't know what you're going through with your marriage, your kids, your finances, your family issues, drama, medical reports. I'm not sure what you're going through, but I agree with the pastor. When one mourns, we all mourn. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. We're a body. We're a family. We're a team. We need each other, and ultimately we need him. We're in this together. Come on, in Jesus' name. But there's a song I learned a long time ago. It simply says, faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Now, how many of you have ever seen a mustard seed? Doesn't the Bible talk about having faith as a mustard seed? Watch this. And a mustard seed goes from being one of the smallest seeds, I think it's the smallest seed, to one of the largest flowers, but it has to be planted and watered. What's the Bible say? Paul plants, Apollos, but the Lord brings the increase. So we've got to plant, we've got to water. Are you with me? And yet God at the same time brings the increase. But what am I saying? We have to have faith just as a mustard seed. There's not a whole lot, but we have to use what we have. So it's a very simple song. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Anybody here this morning say, brother, I need faith for what I'm going through. I need faith for how I'm feeling. I need faith for the conversation I just had Wednesday with a friend of mine. Come on. We understand that we need God and we need to exercise and walk in the faith that we have. Are you ready? I'm not. Just kidding. Okay. Here we go. Acapulco, Pastor Chris, you're a singer. Here we go. 
Faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. Real simple. Here we go. Faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. Well, you don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. Come on, real simple. Faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Well, you don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. All right, now, I'm a drummer. So you got the clap wrong. The Lord can't move unless the clap's right. So we're going to do a little clap, okay? Foot clap, foot clap, foot clap, foot clap, foot clap, foot clap. Here we go. Come on. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Well, you don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Come on, sing. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Well, you don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Are you with me? You're the drummer, right? Are you the drummer? Yeah, one of the drummers. Yeah, one of the drummers. You got a bunch of drummers, don't you? Yeah, you were drumming this morning. Great job. He drummed last night. Come on, thumbs up for the drummers. Get the drummers. Okay? Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Well, you don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You know what, brother? Drummer. I want you on the drums. Let's go. Come on. We'll give you extra money. Come on. Come on, give this guy a hand. You ready? Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Come on, here we go. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Well, you don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Come on, sing. Faith, just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Well, you don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Just this side, sing. Faith, 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 just a little You don't need a whole lot. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Now this section, everybody here. Just a little bit of Well, just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Are you ready over here? Come on. Faith. Just a little bit of faith. All right, everybody sing this part. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Well, just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of. All right, I can be normal now. Thank you, brother. First name? Todd? 
Todd, I can't hear anymore. My kids are always yelling at me, Dad, you're always what? You can't hear. I can't see either. Seriously, I can't. I go out to eat with my family. I can't read the menu. I can't read. Of course, I never liked reading, so it's a good thing, but. Whoa, that was fun. I burned some calories, man. <laughs> Thank you, God. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. I want to share a few thoughts, and then we're going to open the altars. What a great service. What a great crowd. And I'm believing God for a real breakthrough with some of you today. Amen. Thank you for coming. You know, a lot of people are going back to church, and there's all kinds of things going on, and we get it. But it's not all good. And the argument is, you know, people don't go to church because they're freaked out about COVID and all these other things. But yet they'll go to the movies, they'll go to Target, they'll go to Walmart. You know, right? But I'm glad you're here. Thank you for coming. You know, online stuff is great, but you don't have this. You can't reach out and touch people this that way. Amen? So the Bible talks about not neglecting assembling together as some are in the habit of doing so. Thank you, Pastor, for your leadership. Thank you for those that call Greater Valley home. Thank you for being here today. I mean that. So I've entitled the sermon, We Can Do Better. How many want to do better? How many need to improve in some areas? How many have it all together? Anybody? No. We all have areas of improvement. We all have things that we need to work on. How many of we're all under construction? We're not there yet. So understand that, admit to that, and let's move on. But I've entitled the sermon, We Can Do Better. How many know it's your choice? The way you live, the way you act, the way you conduct yourself, when you read the Bible, are you willing to agree with it? Put it into practice? Because faith without is dead. You got that. Faith without works is dead. It is. So I want you to look at Galatians 5 and verse 1. And I want to capture some things here today. Look at it. It, it. it says this. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Stop there, all eyeballs here. What a tremendous reality. What a great scripture. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Aren't you thankful that he came to bring freedom? He is freedom. He came to set you free from bondage, sin, yourself. How many know the day you got saved, you were free from yourself? You died that day. There was a funeral. But aren't you thankful this morning that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free? It goes on to say, therefore stand firm and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Look at me. It's for freedom that Christ has set us free. He wants you to be free this morning. What does the Bible say? You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But how do we know that knowing the truth doesn't set anybody free? We all know the truth. We all know what we should be doing, how should we should be living, all the things that we know to do that are right. We all know it. We know it in our knower, if you will. But it's another thing to live it out. In fact, that scripture is really misused. We say, hey, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Great, wonderful. Yeah, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, when you look at the context in John 8, 32, Jesus said it like this to the disciples. If you hold into my teaching, then you are my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So unless you're a disciple, which means a disciplined one, unless you're willing to hear the truth, abide in the truth, follow the truth, and embrace it, you ain't going to be free from anything. So it's more than knowing the truth. It's applying the truth, living in the truth, and believing in the truth. 
How many this morning need to be free from some stuff? How many this morning didn't even know you needed to be free? But God's going to speak to you today about some stuff because that's what God does. God will speak to you. God will challenge you. God will convict you. How many of that word conviction is a really good word? You feel bad, which is a good thing. How many know it's a good thing to feel bad as long as you make the adjustments? Because God loves you that way. And he wants you to understand some things. But here's the deal. Most of us know the truth. We can tell everybody else how to live. But yet we don't do it ourselves. Let me also say this. Most Christians do not walk in the freedom that God has provided. Most Christians do not walk in the freedom that Christ provided. We look at the crucifixion. We look at the virgin birth. We look at Christmas when you see Jesus in the manger. It's all about freedom. It's for freedom that Christ came, lived, and died, suffered, was buried, and rose again. It's for your freedom. Hallelujah. Are you with me? But here's the question. Are you ready? Do you want to be free? Now, this is where we're going to change things. Because there's a question that I just asked that the Lord is asking all of us. Do we want to be free? Do you want to be free from lust? Not just sexual, but lust for things. Do you want to be free from gossip, which for some of you has controlled your life? We're going to get a little intense here. Are you ready? Do you want to be free from greed? Do you want to be set free from anger? Do you have a jealous spirit where you can't even enjoy what you have because you're consumed with what everybody else has? Are you self-centered? Do you want to be free from drug addiction, alcoholism? Are there some things here this morning that are weighing you down? Look at me. How many want to be f free from stress, fear, anxiety, discouragement, depression, worry? What did I say in the beginning? It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. But it's your call. It's your choice. Galatians 2.20, all for Jesus. What does it say? For I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. But it's Christ that lives in me. And it says here, and the life I now live. So if we're going to live now, it's not for us anymore. It's for him. But the life I now live. I now live in, by faith in the one who died and gave himself for me. Look at me this morning. I want to be free. I pray that you want to be free from some stuff in Jesus' name. Freedom, listen, is what Christ came to give us. He came to set us free, not only in heaven, because the Christian life, watch now, is not just about getting to heaven, but Jesus said, help me out, John 10.10, 10, the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy, but I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. The Christian life is not about just getting to heaven. It's about having a bit of heaven here as you follow him and allow him to let you live in the freedom that he provided on the cross. Come on. What does the Bible say? Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. You've got to believe it. And understand this. Freedom is not the ability to do what you want. There's a world out there right now that doesn't care at all about what we're doing. They're free, so they think, to go and do what they want to do, go where they want to go. But guess what, friends? They're not free. You know people that I'm talking about right now. Your family, your friends, your neighbors, they're in bondage to all kinds of stuff and don't even realize it. But how many are thankful this morning that whom the sun sets free is free indeed, but we have to live the freedom out, walk in the freedom that he provided, and embrace it and be thankful for it. The Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Do you believe that? 
The Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. The Word says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. The Word says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The Bible says if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But let's stop for a moment. How many know sin is fun? It's fun for a season. But there's a check in the mail. There's a payday. You play with fire, you get burnt. What goes around comes around. God won't be mocked. You reap what you sow. Sin is fun for a season. And the reality this morning, listen, is that all of us have a story. Every one of us has a testimony of your life, your upbringing, things that you've gone through, pains and difficulties and struggles. Some of you had a bad childhood. Some of you were abused. Some of you listening to me this morning grew up in the church, but yet have you know that sin and disobedience is no respecter of persons. And the opportunity to be in bondage, the opportunity to not be free is there for everyone. And I'm trying to communicate to you this morning as the Lord's directing me is this, we are not living some of us in the freedom that the Lord Jesus has provided. That's what I'm trying to say. And today that's going to change. But I got to ask you, do you want to be free? See, we like sin. We like immorality. We like to do what we want to do. And some of you, you're so used to being stressed, you actually like being stressed. You like being angry. You like gossip. You like to worry about your life and everybody else's life. You feel like that's a ministry God's given you, just to worry about everybody. Some of you like that spirit of jealousy. You like the competitiveness involved in stuff. We fall into sins and different appetites and pleasures. But look at me. Jesus took the greatest hit of all. He started the first rescue mission. And he provided a better way. But here's the deal. you got to want it. Jesus said it is written. That's why it's so important that we read the Bible. When Jesus faced temptation three times, what did he say? Say all three times. It is written. When you and I face stuff, we've got to know the book. And more than knowing the book, we've got to live it out. Freedom. Hallelujah. Somebody once said, when your Bible's messed up, chances are your life isn't. The reality is God desires that we hold on to his word. We become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, not just hearing only, but doing it. Freedom is knowing the truth and becoming a disciple and a follower of the truth. I'm going to date myself, but years ago, there was a well-known Christian band called Mylon Lefevre and Broken Heart. I've seen them before. Awesome. That name sounds weird today, doesn't it? But back then, it was super cool. Mylon Lefevre and Broken Heart. Anybody? Okay, thank you. He had a song entitled, We Need to Hate. Sin and love God. Love God and hate sin. Come on. Love God, hate sin. How many know we need to be determined who we're going to follow? Because every day you're either going to feed the flesh or your spirit. It's an everyday choice. I don't know about you, but I want to live for God. I want to live in the victory and in the freedom that he has provided for me. For freedom. It's for freedom. This whole thing we're doing today with church is for freedom. So what about you? You're sitting here. You're listening. You're thinking about Applebee's. Is there an Applebee's around here? Okay, thank God. That wouldn't have gone well if there wasn't. Do you want to be free today? Stress? Some of you are stress buckets. Look at me. God wants to set you free from stress, worry, anxiety, insecurity, loneliness, bitterness, regret. You think God wants you to live with those things? You think he wants you to live in bondage with shackles and chains? Do you understand this? 
Some of you have addictions. Some of you have some things that you're facing that God knows about, you know about, maybe a few other people know about it, and in a few moments, we're going to bring some things to the light. I looked up some common addictions. Are you ready? Gambling. I'm, an, I'm amazed at how many people I see at Sheets, Wawa, Rudders, Speedway, doing those scratch-offs, morning, noon, and night. Just what if? Video games. In fact, we have an epidemic on our hands. Kids don't want to go out and get a job. They just want to play video games all day long. Some people are addicted to exercise, eating, shopping, social media, their phone. Try taking my daughter's phone from her. See how that goes. Just for five minutes, see how it goes. Pornography, drugs, alcohol. There's some serious addictions out there. How about this addiction? Always being right. Do you have that problem? How about this one? Getting the last word. Is that a stronghold with you? Some of you are saying, oh, Jesus, help me. How about a control freak? Anybody like to be in control of everything? <laughs> I told the pastor last night after our wonderful men's group together, I said, look, I learned a long time ago. I used to think I was in control. I wasn't in control. Now I realize I don't want to be in control. How many know that's so fun? But what am I saying? Well, this whole Christian life, the whole message of the cross, all the songs we sing, the reason we come to church is to look and appreciate and live in the freedom that he has provided from us. How much would it make sense if we leave the service today with the same chains on us? Okay, we'll see you next week. You want to live that way? Do you need to live that way? Should you live that way? Are you wanting to go there? Well, I want you to be free. He wants you to be free. It's for freedom that Christ came to set us free. Do not become enslaved to the bondage any longer. Look at me. I'm not a sharp guy. You guys know that. I'm thankful for the pastor because he's willing to be in public with me. Not a lot of people do that. But I'm here this morning to tell you he wants to set us free. I looked up the definition of addiction. Compulsive engagement in rewarding stimuli despite adverse consequences. When you look at addiction, the world says it's the disease of the mind. But I believe it's the disease of the mind, heart, and will. It's called a sin problem. And the reality is we have a sin issue. You know, I talked about COVID last night. And mentioned how people say, oh, I, we want to get back to the way things used to be. Really? Do you want to get back to the way it was before COVID? Was your life all that? But see, we're such creatures of habit. We just want to get back to what we know. But the reality is we're worked, about, we're worked up about getting COVID, having a disease of the heart called sin. We got a sin problem. We got a sin issue. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. But there's a difference between committing sin and living in sin. We mess up. We fall short. But I'm here this morning to tell you that he provided freedom. But you've got to want to be free. You've got to admit that you need to be free. So different than getting saved. I can't save you. You can't save me. I can't push you, bully you, give you three points in a poem on why to get saved. i got to just pray for you. And you make the decision. The same is true today. Some of you, unfortunately, may leave still in bondage. But some of you say, you know what? I don't want to live this way anymore because it's messing up my family. It's messing up my marriage. It's messing up my job. It's messing up my life. Sin is serious. So what about you? You know, my wife and kids, my kids are 18, 16, 14. They all lied to me recently. Because they're in basketball, and they said the season was over. Even their coaches lied to us, my wife and I. They said, we're done. And then a week later, here's the new schedule, because all three of my kids are really good ballers. They don't get that from my wife and I. I was never really good in sports. My wife failed, Jim. 
I mean, Jim, I knew I could pass Jim. All you have to do is show up with your tennis shoes. My wife failed Jim. Who does that? But my kids are all ballers. And now they're in the all-star games, which is another month. I'm like, Jesus, help me. We've been eating dinner in gas stations and doing homework in the car, and I'm tired of it. My wife and I started praying that they would do bad. They're like, God, we're going to win tonight. My wife and I are like, in Jesus' name, Father, help them. Because we know we're all winners in Jesus. Help them to lose so we can be done and give the uniform back. But the reality is, you know, we have a sin problem. We have to look at what matters. We have to get back to the basics. Are you with me? So we're trying to be on a budget now, my wife and I, because we've been spending a boatload of money. And my gosh, that price has gone up. Walmart, we're buying the same stuff. It's 500 instead of 300. It's insane. Gas, it's, it's nuts. So my wife and I are trying to budget. And every now and then, we just move to where we're at now. And I'm going to talk about moving tonight. So come back tonight. Service, six. Pastor, are you coming? He might come. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's a car wash next to where we're now living, which is good and bad. Because even though our cars are crap, I still like to wash it. I don't know why. Our cars are not very nice. But my point is this. Work with me here. We, uh, I recently went through the car wash, and I normally get the $5 one, which is the cheapest. You know, you, $5 is just a guy that with a hose. Come on. Just, just spray it. Just kidding. A little bit better than that. I pushed the $9. I thought, oh, stink. I gotta, my wife's going to see that I spent 9 bucks to go through, to drive through. Our cars are crap. That's, you know, I, I feel bad, but you can't, you can't get it back. You get the light turns green, and you got to go now. So I spent nine bucks on the ultimate extreme car wash. I've never done that in my life. The one I normally do is you do it yourself, or you drive through three to five bucks, guy with a hose, whatever. So I went to the extreme thing. It took about a half an hour. There were lights and colors and smells, and they were cleaning on top and underneath and around. I mean, it was the full supreme ultimate package. Undercoat, overcoat, side coat, wax, wars, somebody to pay your bills, watch your kids for a date night. I mean, it was all there. And I'm feeling guilty, and then I thought, as I'm in there, I might as well enjoy it. Probably the underneath of the car needs to be cleaned. I don't know. And I started to feel guilty, and then my wife yelled at me for spending nine bucks on a crappy car to get a car wash. In fact, seriously, go out and look at my car. It's a Subaru, 2010, rusting. My daughter, who's been driving for a year now, hit our car with her other car. The Subaru has a dent in the back. She hit our car with the other car. I said, honey, Olivia, what are you doing? She said, I didn't know it was behind me. Okay. So I've got a dent in the Subaru, which is always good for an evangelist because the offerings are better. Because It's not like I'm driving a Hummer or something. So go look at the car. <laughs> but... I realized and I thought to myself, I'm not worthy of this car wash. I'm not worthy of nine bucks to get this thing all cleaned up and waxed. I mean, there were things on the description. It's like a, it's like three pages long, what they're going to do. You know, I've never even, that's not my world. You know, five bucks and done. God wants us to live in freedom. He wants to wash you clean. He wants to bless you. He wants to give you victory today. You're not worthy of it. I'm not worthy of it. So let's move on. It's by his grace that you're saved. It's by his grace through his spirit that whom the sense sets free is free indeed. But you've got to want to be free. You've got to admit that you're free. And you've got to take some steps to be free. Would you stand this morning with me? Our worship team would come.
I want to give you an opportunity to respond. Look, I've tried to do the best I can. And the pastor and the worship team, they've done their part. In a few moments, you're going to be leaving. And I'm going to be going to lunch and then go back and take a nap and then preach again and drive back to Pittsburgh. That's what I do. But I'm convinced in my heart because God laid this message on me for you today is that you're not free. Some of you have anger. you got some anger problems. Look at me. I'm telling you, Jesus came to set you free. Lust, jealousy, bitterness, insecurity, gossip, vaping, alcohol, drugs, your phone consumes you, TV consumes you, social media is crazy, Facebook is over the top. In fact, I saw something the other day. It says, are you on Facebook more than your face is in the book? Our world has got some problems. There's a lot of addictions out there. Something that's consuming you more than it should. Are you free today? Do you have joy? Purpose? Are you shackled and bound? Are you a control freak? Are you a worry wart? Do you want to live stressed? Our sister confirmed what I preached on about anxiety. What did she read? Cast your cares on him. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Some of you, I want you to step out in a moment and say, you know what, God? I don't want to live this way anymore. I don't want to be bound. I'm tired of it. Put your hands up with me right now. Father, it's for freedom that you came to set us free. And Father, I pray as you're looking down at every person that they would say, Jesus, set me free today from my issues. Set me free from the strongholds. Set me free from anything that's not of you and anything that's more than it should be. Father, I need you today to set me free. If that's you, I want you to step out. Come on, I want you to step out. There are many that need to take a step forward in Jesus name right now step out come on take a step take a step take a step come on now step out in the name of Jesus come on that's it father we thank you Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, that it's for freedom that you came to set us free. Worry, anxiety, anger, bitterness, jealousy, lust, greed, selfishness, drugs, alcohol, anything that's not of you. Father, we confess. We repent. We turn. Lift us up, God. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you're here without the Lord. You're a nice person. You have a nice job. You have a nice family. But yet you've never invited Jesus into your heart. If you're here and you've never said, Jesus, come in to my life. Forgive me of my sins. Take over. My life's yours. I don't want to be in control. I surrender to you. If yes, if you're here today and you've never prayed that prayer, say it now. Say, God, come into my life. Father, take over. Forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. Maybe you're here and you're a Christian. 
Maybe you're here and you know the Lord, but yet your life isn't what it should be. You've gone away from your first love. It's called backsliding. And right now the Lord's speaking to you. He says, I love you. I died for you. I care about you. I want you to talk to me again. Read about me. Spend time with me. Share who I am with others. Maybe you're here and you've gone away from God. Right now, why don't you say a prayer and say, Father, I come back to you today. I want to come back to my first love. Help me to follow you. Help me to walk with you. Help me to serve you. Come on, there are others. There are others that still need to come out. Father, I come against anything that's not of you. Any unholy or impure thing. I come against witchcraft, darkness, demons, the devil. I come against anything that is not of you. We are on holy ground. We are going to serve you with all of our hearts. We give you praise today, God. Deliver us. Set us free. Wash us. Clean us up. Renew a right spirit within us. Hallelujah. Now, even where you're standing, there's a place right where you're standing. There's an altar which is right where you're at with your own heart. You may not come forward, but right where you're standing, say, Father, deliver me from anything that's not good. Deliver me that the joy of the Lord may be my strength, the joy of my salvation. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor, is there oil? Is there oil? If somebody wants prayer, look at me now. You come in the front. We're going to pray for you right now. You want to be anointed. Some of you need healing in your body. Some of you need peace in your mind. Some of you are going through marital struggles. You've got kids in jail. Some of you need a job. Some of you have been diagnosed with something and you're scared to death. We're going to pray for you today. We're going to ask God Almighty to come down and intervene on your behalf. In Jesus' name, you come and stand. Break every chain, break every chain. 
Say, Father in heaven. Let's try that one more time. My Father in heaven, I come to you through the name of Jesus Christ. Today I'd like to refresh my commitment to you. I'd like to lay everything down before the cross. I apologize for trying to be in control of my life. It's not working when I do that. So, Father, today I ask for your help to relinquish control and to give it to you. Break the chains, break the bondage that are in my life. Let my mind be renewed so that the strongholds will not be strongholds any longer let me walk in the liberty by which you've made me free i praise you that i am a new creation in christ jesus let the enemy be bound from my life surround me with your angels let me stand firm in the midst of adversity through the powerful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands towards heaven and receive that today? God is going to give that to you, but you are making that fresh commitment to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. You may have tried in the past, but I want to encourage you. Keep pressing in. Do not give up. Do not be weary in well-doing. Do not let the enemy tell you you can't make it. Do not let the enemy tell you that you cannot do this. It is a fresh day. It's a new start. Isaiah said, behold, I do a new thing. I do a new thing. He's doing a new thing in you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's sing that again. There is power in the name. Sing this like you believe it today. There is power. To break, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. To break every chain, you 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 break every chain. One more time, there is power. Sing it one more time. There is power. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, you break every chain, you break every chain, you break every chain, you 
break every chain. You break every chain. You break. One more time. You break every chain. You break every chain. You break every chain. You break every chain. Hallelujah. Many of you guys know Jacob Spinoza. Mike, this is your son, right? You claim him, right? I'm temporarily going to claim him just as my son. I've got two sons here with me today, but let's just pretend that this is my son. And let's say that we have an estranged relationship, not a strange relationship, but an estranged relationship. And I desperately want fellowship with him. And he says, Dad, I don't want anything to do with you. So he turns his back on me and he leaves me. Well, then I say, son, I want a relationship with you. And he says, no, 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 no. And he does this day after day. And he does things that he knows will be in spite of me. Things that he knows will irritate me. Why? Because he's just going through a bad time in life. And let's say that that bad time in life lasts day after day after day for year after year after year. Finally, one day, he comes back and says, Dad, I want to have a relationship with you. What's my response going to be? You know, get away from me? No. If I'm a loving father, I'm going to say, Son, that's what I've wanted all along. The love that God has for you is nothing compared to an earthly father's love. It is a love that says, no matter what you've done, even if you've done it day after day after day, even if you've been bound in sin and you've been trying to get free for years, still, I want you to not give up. I want you to keep coming back to me. Keep returning back to me because what God wants is not so much for you to break your sin. He desires that. That's for sure. No doubt about that. But what God wants is a relationship with you that is growing in love because as that relationship grows in love, then the tendency to want to do the things of sin break away. But it's not in you trying to do it. It's in you furthering the relationship with God in your life. And the Holy Spirit will empower you to do that so that you can spend your time in relationship with Him. How many have been blessed by the Lord today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone look towards heaven and just say, thank you, Jesus. Someone look towards heaven and say, thank you, Father. And someone just look towards heaven and say, thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask you to be back to your seats for a second. Just be seated, if you will. As musicians continue to play, we want to bless our evangelists. Listen, for those of you who know me, we have a number of people who've been either visiting today or with us for the first time in the last few weeks. You may not know me, but for those of you who do, you, you know me, I never put guilt on people to get you to give. I'm simply going to ask you to do what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do. It goes without saying that many people were touched by the power of the Holy Spirit today and he used our evangelist to do it. He's traveled here from Pittsburgh. Gas is now over $4 a gallon. And I'm not going to guilt you. I'm not going to manipulate you to give. But I am going to ask you, can we bless our evangelist today? Someone say tonight. Someone say tonight. Six o'clock. You're going to have an opportunity. Come on back tonight and be blessed. And I encourage you to do that. But I'd like you to have this opportunity to give towards our evangelist today. If you're writing a check out, you can do it towards Greater Valley Assembly of God. You can go online, give to online. You can text the numbers on the bulletin. But we want to bless our evangelist today. Uh, again, I love this brother because he is who he is. He's not coming in. He's never demanded an offering. Uh, last night I talked to him and, you know, he said through COVID, honorariums have been down slightly. Uh, we want this to be an exception here at Greater Valley Assembly of God. We want to bless him today. So, Father, today, as we get ready to give and bless our evangelist, Lord, I pray that you will just allow the anointing of the Lord to continue to flow through him, flow through his family. Lord, I pray protection upon him. I pray for health. I pray for peace. I pray for tranquility to be upon his entire life and family. Honor him as he is honoring you. And, Lord, for these people today that may be even taking a sacrifice to give, Lord, I pray that you will bless them and help them to realize that they cannot outgive you because you are faithful in blessing those who put you first in the area of finances and in every other area of our lives today. Hallelujah. We love you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand with me, and as we get ready to go, we're going to ask Molly to sing that one more time. And as we get ready to go, head on out towards a basket and uh, just drop your offering in the basket. And can you give Richard Rock on one more round of appreciation for his ministry with us today? And God bless you guys. Come on out tonight at 6 o'clock. And please leave an offering for the evangelist. We'll get that tonight to him. God bless you guys. Thank you for being with us tonight.
Hallelujah. Sing it one more time. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every Break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. God bless you as you go. Richard Rockhine has a display table out in the lobby if you'd like to visit that. God bless you guys. Thanks for giving today. Thanks for worshiping with us. See you tonight, 6 o'clock. God bless. Hey there, I'm Chris. I've been honored to be the lead pastor of Greater Valley Assembly of God for over 22 years, and so far it's been a great adventure. Thank you so much for joining us online today. I'm so glad you did. Our desire here is to help people continually develop in their relationship with Jesus Christ through relevant biblical messages, contemporary worship, and great fellowship in an atmosphere where you will feel relaxed and sense the presence of God. If you'd ever like to get in touch with us, feel free to contact us. Or, even better yet, visit us on a Sunday morning at 1045 a.m. or on a Wednesday night at 630 p.m. in Athens, Pennsylvania. May God continue to richly bless you and prosper you in body, soul, and spirit.